So you probably came across uh, this term MCB or MLO. And the difference is one is called main circuit breaker and the other one is main lug only. Um, and these are in references to a type of panel board, basically one with a breaker at the top that shuts off the whole panel and one without. So it's just main lug only. I saw a diagram one day that basically had a distribution panel board that was feeding like six different branch panels and all six of them had a main circuit breaker. So I find that uh, one to be kind of pointless and two, a waste of money. So let me explain to you what the difference between the two is and when you should use one or the other. All right, so MCB panels definitely have their uses. For example, if that's your only panel, then you would want an MCB because then that breaker would act as your service disconnect. Um, you also need a panel like that for the secondary side of a transformer if your MCB is gonna be your protection side. So any, anything um, within 10 or 25 feet on the secondary side of a transformer needs to have some type of um, overcurrent protection. So usually you would throw an MC, MCB panel on the secondary side and that breaker acts as your protection. Uh, the, some of the downsides for uh, the MCB panel is that even when you shut off the main breaker, your entire panel is not completely de-energized because that little bit that comes in from the top that feeds the breaker is still energized. So some of the clients that we work for have a policy that says anyone working in a panel must completely de-energize it. And that means shutting it off from upstream. So going to a panel and flipping the main breaker doesn't really do anything for them. They still have to make the trip to another panel to lock out, tag out and all that stuff. So it's a little pointless to do so. Um, we would just put in a main lug only and then they would just go upstream, turn it off and then that panel is completely dead. So that's kind of the downfall number one for it. Um, the other one is that it's just more expensive. So um, you have to have an extra breaker in there. You have to have the plugs to house that breaker. You know, the more cut, uh, another cutout in the breaker, plus it takes up space. So it's just um, longer lead times and uh, more money. And that doesn't really help nowadays when everything takes forever to order. All right, so then point number three is that if you're feeding from a distribution panel, that panel will obviously have a breaker that protects the feeder. Then when you get to your panel, you have another main circuit breaker in there. So you have essentially a breaker on both ends of the feeder. The downside is that they're not gonna be coordinated because they should be the same breaker size. Like if you have a hundred upstream, you should have a hundred downstream. But if you have a short that trips out your hundred amp breaker, there's no guarantee of which one will trip first. Like you can have the upstream trip and the downstream be just fine or vice versa. So now you just have more breakers to have to check to be able to reset everything. Uh, when you have a large distribution that has like 100, 200, 400, 800 amp panels, you wanna make sure that they're selectively coordinated so that you don't have a cascading effect where um, something downstream would trip out a panel and then that panel will knock out the distribution panel which then could knock out a switchboard. So select selective coordination is important to consider there. Um, so if you have it on both ends, there's no guarantee that one will break or one will trip before the other. All right, so if you're not going to use an MCB for the previously mentioned reasons, you are going to use an MLO, main lug only. So that basically takes a feeder that comes in, lands it on a couple lugs, and it just energizes the panel. There's no local switch that shuts off the whole panel. The benefit of that is obviously cost. It's much cheaper because you don't have to have the main breaker up there. And two, um, if you were to get the feed through lugs, you can feed from the top and then down at the bottom, you could jump over to the next panel. Um, or you could do it vice versa. You could feed from the bottom and jump off the top. But effectively, you can string multiple of these MLO panels together for a multi-section distribution panel, or not distribution, for a multi-section branch panel. Um, this gives you a lot of poles that you can switch on and off. So like if you wanna just bring 400 amps to a certain closet, you can just keep jumping from panel to panel and have like, I don't know, 84, 100 and something poles um, on this one panel, section one, two, and three. So it's kind of cheap and effective if you uh, don't really know how many poles you need yet. So you wanna just start off with like one or two panels and you can always daisy, daisy chain more of them. 
uh, it's not really practical to have a main circuit breaker there. You really want to just go back to the distribution and shut off that whole lineup anyways. So the bottom line is that you want to make sure that your distribution panel is protecting the feeder and the panels downstream. You don't have to have an MCB for every location on your entire site. Um, of course, there's certain areas, you know, as your secondary derived system of a transformer or if it's your service entrance or uh, sometimes if your client is okay with it or wants it, like if they are okay with their electricians working in a semi-live panel, then okay, by all means, go ahead, put it in. Um, maybe their distribution panel, it's like, you know, on the other side of the building. So it might be convenient to have an MCB there. But for the most part, I generally don't put them in. I generally put a distribution center or panel within, um, you know, reasonable walking distance from the branch panel. And then they would just go there, lock it, tag it out, and they're good to go to work on the downstream panel. I have seen an interesting use case for an MCB panel before where uh, they would bring the feeder in and they would actually land on the feed through lugs at the bottom of the bus. Then from there, it you know it, effect, it effectively makes it a main lug only panel. Then they would use the MCB at the top, which was about 100 amps, and they would feed that to an autoclave. So most of the power that comes in actually goes out to the autoclave, and then it feeds a couple um, local branch circuits there. So that was an interesting use of a panel, but it was listed as MLO on the uh, single line diagram. But if you looked at it in the field, it looked like an MCB panel, but the main breaker had a big sign that says to autoclave. So you had to like, think about it for a minute. They're like, oh, you're back feeding this from the bottom and then you're going out the MCB to your load. So that panel was effectively considered a main lug only. So someone got creative with that and that's how they used the panel. Okay, so that's my spiel on MCB versus MLO. Uh, thanks for listening. If you have any questions or if I just confuse you more, let me know in the comments below or hop over on Discord. We can have a discussion there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.